What's going on guys? We are back talking about two new lenses for the Nikon Z mount. The Nikkor Z51.2 S lens as well as the 1424 f2.8 for the Z mount as well. Now, if you haven't seen my Z62 review and Z72 review, do check out those videos, but uh, we're here to talk about the lenses. And uh, let's talk about the one a lot of people are very interested about, the Nikkor Z51.2 S lens. So let's talk about the Nikkor Z51.2. You know, um, I'm just gonna say wow. I mean, I'll go into more detail than that, trust me, but that's the Cliff Notes version of this. You know, when Nikon uh, first came out with the Z cameras, the, Z the Z6, Z7, and the lenses, the 1.8s and the F4s, they were fantastic lenses, right? I mean, they were sharp, great rendering, but they did have that je ne sais quoi people wanted. They wanted that 1.4, the 1.2s, they wanted those fast lenses, you know? And a lot of it's more for bragging rights or just more to say that they have it. But Nikon took more of that conservative route with their lenses. Then they came out with the 58.95, which we reviewed here on the channel. We'll put a link right here uh, to check that out after this review, of course. And that was a beautiful lens. It was massive, it was big, but it was bitingly sharp, wide open, great rendering. I mean, a phenomenal lens. Then they took a lot of that engineering from the 58.95 and they put that into the 70 to 200 f2.8, which I have in the bag as well. And that's, that's my favorite 70 to 200 lens out there on the market. And other reviewers have said this as well. It is a fantastic lens. Then we get to the 51.2. And everybody's thinking, is Nikon gonna put that engineering from the 58.95, the 70 to 200s, all these fast lenses, are they gonna do this with the 51.2? How is it gonna perform? And I will tell you, out of the 50 millimeter autofocusing lenses I have tested thus far, I will put this right next to the Leica Summicron SL50 F2 in terms of sharpness and rendering and performance. So you're probably asking, am I saying this is better than the Canon 50 1.2 RF lens? I think it is. This is a fantastic performing lens in terms of image quality, in terms of autofocusing, it is fast. Now it is a very large lens. Look at this. This has the size of an 85 or 95 millimeter or 100 millimeter lens. I don't know if they make a 95 millimeter lens, but a 100 millimeter lens or thereabouts. It's a large lens. You got a lot of great glass in this. A lot of the same glass you had in the 58.95, that engineering is in this, but with autofocusing. So you have 17 elements, 15 groups. You go from F1.2 up to F16. 82 millimeters for the filter thread on this. Um, you have the display on this because all the S-line lenses start having this now. It's more, more to your, your focal range and everything else. You have your function button, your A for autofocus, M for manual switch. You've got your ED elements, three spherical elements, your Arneo crystal elements in this. You have got it all in here. The autofocusing motor is lightning fast. It's heavy coming in at 1,090 grams or about 2.4 pounds thereabouts. It's really fantastic. And it's great for video as well. As a matter of fact, Talking about the iPhone uh, review, uh, video that I did, we shot that with the Z62, with the 85 1.8 and the 50 1.2, so you can see the image quality on that. Eye tracking is fantastic, auto focusing is really good, image quality is there. I love this lens. I don't know what the price point will be here in Singapore. This is a pre production lens that hasn't been finalized yet, but uh, yeah, guys, it's the real deal. Okay. I'll stop drooling about this lens, and let's talk about the all new 1424 f2.8 that I have mounted on the Z72 right now. So let's talk about this 1424 f2.8 lens here. Again, image quality. Nikon is making some of the best mirrorless lenses out there on the market right now. Like the 51.2, this 1424 f2.8 is a bitingly sharp, beautiful rendering lens that is up there with the best wide angle zoom lenses out there at f2.8. Again, they have hit a home run. 
These Nikkor S line lenses are no joke. Now, you're probably noticing, Bobby, this is a massive lens cover on the front of this and lens hood. We'll get into that in just a second. Let me just take this off to show you what the lens looks like without it. Nice and compact, internal zoom, like internal zooms. No image stabilization in this, but usually don't have it on wide angle zooms. Um, not too bad in terms of weight. It's about 650 grams thereabouts. So it's a pretty lightweight lens. Feels really good on the Z7 II or Z6 II for that matter. Um, let's talk about what's inside. So you have 16 elements, 11 groups. You have that Arnold crystal elements. You've got three aspherical elements. You've got ED elements in this. That quality of glass that you're seeing in the 51.2, the, the 70 to 200 f2.8, the 58.95, it carries over into this wide angle zoom lens. Now in terms of the front of the lens, there's this dome shaped glass. So yeah, you're not gonna put a filter on this and this little mini uh, lens hood thing that they have, it's a bit of a more for design than anything else. You can't put a filter on that as well. That's where this comes in. 112 millimeter of filter that you can put on this lens hood. So you actually get two lens caps. You get a lens cap for this, you don't want to carry this around and you got a massive lens cap on the hood if you want to use this for the filter but like other lenses out there where you probably have to put an nd filter in the back of the uh, lens rely on this now 112 millimeters for that filter diameter keep that in mind very fast auto focusing no issues at all all everything i'm using this is all pre-production but again I'm not having no issues. Performance is fantastic. Image quality, as you can see here, is really good. Um, it's really nice at 24. It's really awesome at 14. And this will be a great video lens as well. So if you want to do any sort of vlogging with this lens, it's lightweight. Pop it on and you're good to go. By the way, I do want to let you guys know that if you're using a uh, previous uh, polarizer or ND filter on your uh, F mount wide angle lens, you might need to uh, find another way to adapt it because I don't think there's much of a way to adapt that size to this without getting a third party um, adapter of some sort. So it might be a little bit tricky right now. So if you're really going to go into the Z system and you have these old filters for your F mount lenses of uh, your F 2.8s, maybe you wanna think of selling them off or trading them in and going into something like this, especially if you're gonna invest money into this lens because I was watching, looking online and I was trying to find a way to see if there was a way to adapt those older filters. And it's a little bit tricky as of right now. All right guys, enough about me talking about how good these lenses are. Let's go into Lightroom and let's take a look at images up close just to show you how good this image quality actually is. All right guys, we're now in Lightroom taking a look at images from the Z1424 f2.8 S-Line lens as well as the Nikkor Z51.2 s line lens now the 51.2 is a pre-production lens at the time of this recording so i'm not going to go too much in depth in terms of performance but i'll let the images speak for themselves and you know what? i'm going to give you a little bit of uh, heads up on it it's a fantastic lens anyway let's look at the 1424 first and just like a lot of other reviewers out there who have commented on it this is a fantastic lens sharpness from edge to edge uh this is really good. This is at 14 millimeters, f2.8, one over 640th of a second at ISO 180. This is at the zoo, so if you zoom in on here, you see the lions just sort of laying there underneath the trees. But if you just wanna look at the edges here, uh, look at this, at f2.8, what you're seeing in the edges, it's sharp just like it is in the center of the image. These lenses from Nikon are absolutely fantastic, and this 1424 f2.8 is one of my favorite wide angle zoom lenses to date that I've used. It is a fantastic performer. Nikon has knocked it out of the park with this. Let's look at another image here. Also at the zoo. Now this is, of course, wasn't shot in black and white. This is a giraffe and I just sort of like the whole silhouette and the backlighting effect going on here. And this is what the image looked like uh, before edit, after edit, before edit. And again, look at the details all throughout this. Um, from edge to edge on this. It's really fantastic and also handles backlight really well as you can tell uh, It looks it handles it really really well. So Again love this lens now also this lens is good for a uh, somewhat pseudo macro photography here This was an ant that was on a uh, Some sort of plant that was in front of the uh, lions uh, Area at the zoo and I just thought it'd be interesting to try this out 24 millimeters f 2.8 1 over 640th of a second at ISO 450 
and this is really impressive. Very, very sharp before edit, after edit. Again, guys, I love the bouquet, love the separation. Really happy with the performance. And one more shot, just a sort of uh, proof of performance of something different from animals and wildlife. Here's just a car uh, outside of a parking uh, lot here. And I just want to capture that sunrise light on it. And again, you can see the details here with the uh, headlights. Looks fantastic. The water droplets. This is, of course, after edit. Here's before edit, after edit. So, you know, again, edits are subjective. But anyway, let's move on to the 51.2. This is a lens a lot of people are very excited about. I was excited to get my hands on it and it did not disappoint in the least. I can tell you this is probably my favorite 51.2 autofocus lens on the market currently. Here's a couple of examples to show you how good it does. Uh, this is with the Z7 II. This is uh, with the 51.2 at 1.3, 1 over 1 of a second, ISO 64. And uh, look at the bouquet on this, look at the separation, it just pops. And by the way, these are JPEGs. At the time of this recording, you were not able to read RAW files with the Z7 II or Z6 II in Lightroom. So I had to shoot everything in uh, the highest quality JPEG. But just look at the detail this is able to capture just in a JPEG alone with this. Um, Z7 II, fantastic camera. And this paired with this lens, it's a home run. This was really impressive. Uh, I had a few friends actually try this lens out as well, and uh, they're buying it as soon as it's available because it really is that good. Here's another shot of the uh, Ducati uh, Street Fighter V4S. Um, a couple of close-up shots here. This is of the uh, tail of the mo motorcycle. Uh, this is the Ducati uh, logo. I was focusing on that. Look how sharp this is. Of course, this is after edit, before edit, after edit. And uh, again, proof of performance on this. The lens is great. Now, let's look at uh, some action shots. What uh, happened was I was actually uh, scouting locations for the Ducati shoot, and we came across these guys riding dirt bikes in a park nearby. We asked if we could uh, photograph them. They said, okay. All I had with me was the Z7 II and the 51.2, and here we are. Here are some of the uh, results out of it. Uh, this is fast action, one over eight thousandths of a second, f1.2, 50 millimeters, ISO 64. One thing I do like about the Nikon uh, Z camera is, of course, is the really low ISO performance to really, uh, so you don't really need an ND filter. You know, obviously it's good to have one in, in all times, especially if you're doing video, but you can get some great images at 1.2 in bright sunlight, case in point. Um, I did do some edits on this, just sort of highlight it, but look at the mud, look at the uh, action on this. I was trying some various uh, tracking methods with the Z7 II. Again, that was a pre-production camera. It worked better than the Z7, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait till I get a production lens to uh, give you my final thoughts on that. But look at this shot right here. The mud flying out there, motorcycle. I just locked on target with him with the uh, wide uh, mode on this, which is great because in that wide mode, so in the wide angle mode, you can actually have a smaller box where your autofocus points are sort of centralized. And I think this really helps in terms of instead of spraying and praying, it actually really locks down the area you want to focus with. And I got some fantastic results out of it. Here's another shot here. I'm getting to this guy riding a motorcycle. Look at the detail. Look at the sharpness on this. Fantastic. And in terms of uh, photographing people, here's Jay. Give me that model pose. Look at the, look how it just blows out the background on this. Eye tracking on humans is fantastic. On animals, as I mentioned in my Z7 II, Z6 II review, it's a little hit and miss, but I wasn't missing focus. So sometimes don't look at the graphical interface of the box around the eye, look at the end result. And I was getting some fantastic images out of that. Anyway, just for a little bit of a bonus, Let's take a look at uh, some shots with the 70 to 200 f 2.8 ZS line lens on the Z7 II. Here is the white tiger at the zoo. And uh, this was shot at uh, 200 millimeters f 2.8, one over eight hundredths of a second ISO 1000. Look at this. This is tack sharp on the eye. It just nailed focus. Really, really impressive. This is uh, after edit. Here's before edit, after edit. And I'll show you one more shot of the tiger here. Look at this, just nail the eyes right there. Once again, 200 millimeters, F2.8, one over 800s of a second, ISO 800. And this is uh, after edit, here's before, after. Really, really impressive. This lens is just a fantastic lens. And honestly, if you haven't tried the 7200 F2.8 ZS line lens from Nikon, 
do give it a shot. It's probably my favorite 70 to 200 currently on the market with the Panasonic in a very, very close second. Anyway, let's go to my final thoughts on these lenses. All right, so final thoughts on the lenses. <laughs> As I said before, this is, uh, these are fantastic lenses. I'm really impressed with what Nikon's doing with these uh, Z-mount lenses out there. I mean, the 51-2 is a beast of a lens. It's heavy, it's big, but the image quality is some of the best I've seen out of a 50 autofocus lens thus far. And the 1424 f2.8 is a fantastic wide angle zoom lens. Landscape photographers, architectural photographers, anyone that just wants, even for vloggers out there, they just want a nice wide angle zoom lens to do vlogging or video. It's a hard lens to say no to. It's a really hard lens to say no to. <sighs> anyway, those are my thoughts on the lenses. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me on these lenses? Which lens are you looking more uh, forward to getting? The 50 or the 1424 f2.8? Let me know. And like always, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, be safe out there, and I'll chat to you soon. Take care.